Brothers and sisters, welcome back. The first order of business, a brother requested from the previous video the names of the asanas from the fourth tarot card. You will find it in the description. And another brother requested the work of Russian scientist Viktor Stepanovich Grebenikov. Studying the flight of insects, he may have discovered a new form of anti-gravity. You will find the original Russian translated into English in the description. And uh, thank you to the sister who suggested the licorice potion for my voice. I should have used it when I made this video, but of course, ran out. But nonetheless, thank you. Some of you have also informed me that English is not your first language. So if I could speak a little slower, that would help. Definitely will. And also in the future, guys, let me know if it's okay to mention your names. The Golden Book of Wisdom The first five pages of the Golden Book of Wisdom stand for five tarot cards. The original tarot cards. Initiation Evocation The Kabbalah Philosophy and Alchemy Each tarot card stands for one page. Each page stands for one book. Each book represents a page from the Golden Book of Wisdom. The first five pages. And if we had all 78 cards, there would be 78 books 
explaining each mystery. The Atlantean technology, the technology of all technologies. You know, I was going in a different route when I started making this video. I was going to make the video and then give you an understanding of everything at the very end, but decided to do this instead. What you guys are going to see are several video clips, audio clips, and images. And after you view each one, I will give you a description of what the video clips, audio, and images mean. All of these have to do with not just Atlantean technology, but the ancient technology of India and other pre-flood civilizations. What you will see is that magic is nothing but an old or ancient science that existed before the flood and became the stuff of myth and legend after the flood. This ancient technology was the combination of consciousness and the will and machine. The first thing about this science that you need to understand is the energy to power these ancient machines or devices comes from consciousness and the will together. Not consciousness or the will by themselves, but a combination of the two. And with the conscious will, you are able to manipulate the natural reservoir of energy that is supplied by creation itself. This is what makes you a witch, a mage, sorcerer, healer, alchemist, etc. And this is not my opinion. It's a fact that has been passed down for countless millennia. Plato in his dialogues vividly described an island continent beyond the Pillars of Hercules called Atlantis. Ancient Mesopotamian tablets refer to a land destroyed by the Great Flood. The Book of Genesis, the Koran, Mayan legends, the Epic of Gilgamesh, all speak of this once flourishing civilization whose science, it is said, surpassed ours at the moment of its destruction. What became of Atlantis? According to the records of Egyptian priests, in one cataclysmic day and night, the entire continent sank into the depths of the ocean. Russian physicist Emanuel Velikovsky has suggested that Atlantis became the lost continent after a shift in the Earth's axis. Famous psychic Edgar Cayce believed that by misusing the powers of the mind, interrupting the evolution of the planet, Atlantis became the victim of its own perverted super science. And the people of Atlantis, what happened to them? Were they all destroyed? Or did some survive the Holocaust and migrate by sea and air to other lands? Did some Atlanteans retreat into the ocean and establish a magnificent undersea kingdom that still flourishes there today? Or did they, with their advanced technology, escape into outer space? And have they perhaps, since man first left records on cave walls, been returning in their spaceships to observe us as we build the new Atlantis? What evidence is there that man himself was not the sole architect of the Earth's great ancient structures? Did we indeed get a little help from our friends from space? Your tools, the magic wand, the magic mirror, magic rings, and all magical instruments are designed to store, attract, or repel this natural energy, and all manipulated by you. The Secret Science Behind Miracles is a book from 1948. In one chapter, it tells the story of Hawaiian kahuna warriors. 
using energy charged sticks as weapons. Using their conscious will, they would send energy into these sticks, throw them at their enemies, and upon contact with the enemy, knock them out cold, or in some cases, death. These are the rods or wands of ancient Egypt. As told in the 1955 book, Caucasian Yoga. Some of the information contained in this book was then researched by Russian scientists who found out the true use of these rods or wands and their relationship to ancient Egypt. As for years, other mainstream scientists said that these were nothing more than religious symbols or tools. If you look at Master Franz Barton's book, The Practice of Magical Evocation, he gives similar descriptions for the different ways of constructing magic wands or rods. Some are metal tubes filled with different substances like quartz for the magnetic fluid or amber for the electric fluid and a condenser being fluid, gas, or metal, whatever you decide to use, is nothing more but a storage battery. This wand, no, it's not mine, I wish, but this wand belonged to one of our brothers. The age is around, oh, 100 years. It has an ivory handle with a silver tip and embedded within the wood is a gold or copper core. Beautiful. Animated portraits. Even magical paint can be created and used to bring paintings to life. Animated portraits these are the moving pictures like you see in those Harry Potter movies. You must mix special substances that trap energies in the magic paint and then use the paint to animate any old picture or painting you may have by repainting them with the magic paint, if that makes sense. And then, yes, they're real and have been around for centuries. And these are mentioned in Initiation into Hermetics as well. These animated portraits or paintings were used to commit murder and or heal people. You would give the person the animated portrait, they would hang it up in their home or wherever. The painting would either suck the life from them until the person died or 
emit healing energies until the person got well. The Afia. This is a video clip of a master of internal energy using his powers to speak and interact with a man long dead, but who has a little piece of his soul bound to an Indonesian Chris and, yes, like a Horcrux. First, you learn to distinguish between yin and yang chi in your body. Then, how to pull it in your navel chakra. Then, how to project it, he says. And it's the proportionate mixture between yin and yang which accounts for different effects, like pulling or pushing objects or igniting them. Then he gets really strange. He says that mastering yin chi is the key to the spirit world. There's a long tradition of Indonesian Chrises being possessed by spirits. So people bring him their Chrises to see if they're duds. Here, he says, he doesn't manipulate matter by projecting mixtures of yin and yang chi. He merely creates a field of yin energy in which, he says, if there's a spirit, it can manifest itself. And using the same energy with precious stones is how the Atlanteans and other ancient people had light other than fire. They insist we all go to a randomly chosen hotel room several miles away to see if he can light a light bulb with his fingers. It doesn't ground on the wall. So Greg holds and grounds one wire while DJ pumps Chi through the other. The bulbs are LEDs, light-emitting diodes, which ignite in different colors according to the intensity of current. Yes. On, off, on. Brilliant. Oh, you're, you're blinking. This is a chapter from the book, Isis Unveiled, Volume 1, Science. It was written in 1877 by Madame Blavatsky. My copy is 1884. Some of the science may be gone, but refuses to be forgotten. 
gallery at the Manchester Museum. There are all sorts of Egyptian artefacts here, including this little chap. Now, he was made around 1800 BC in honour of the god Osiris, the Egyptian god of the afterlife. Now, he's been in the museum for eight years, but in recent times, he's not been behaving himself because despite being in this seal case, he's been spinning round and round. Don't believe me? Well, Anna is from the museum. When did you notice it was moving? It was more than a month ago, actually. Um, and at the stage that we realised that uh, the statuette was moving around, we installed a stop-motion camera in the case, um, which has produced a video, which is now on YouTube, over 200,000 hits in, in just a few days. So it appears to be moving, but sure, there must be... A is it the cabinet? It's moving as people walk past it. Well, um, there are several ideas as to what's going on, actually. Um, the cabinet itself is attached to the wall. So is it a visitor footfall coming through the gallery? Is it the visitors making vibrations? Is it the road outside? Or is it something more mysterious, which uh, perhaps is associated with um, Egyptian um, spiritual thought? And what do you think it is? I believe it's something more than simply kinetic energy or f a physical reason. Um, the ancient Egyptians made uh, their statues so that they were a second home for the spirit of the deceased if the mummy was to be damaged or destroyed. And so what's to say that the spirit of this individual, Nebsenu, hasn't re-entered the statue and that's what's to To be fair, a skeptic said that it was a vibration of footsteps and traffic outside the case that caused the statue to move. Hmm. Well, the skeptics forget to mention that the statue was there in the Manchester Museum and not touched by human hands for 80 years. 80 years before it started its exodus. And then the skeptics are saying that this museum that houses some of the most priceless artifacts in the world is so slack that a car full of clowns can ride by and rattle the shelves. What do you guys think? As you can understand, all of these objects require energy and are like batteries that must be charged. You supply the energy and then use your conscious will to manipulate reality with these energies. The stronger your conscious will, the stronger the storage. If you remember the movies Clash of the Titans because they were two there is a mechanical owl named Bugle that acts as if it's alive. Believe it or not, these were really famous in Greece and Rome and the pre-flood kingdoms. This is a book of mine from the year 1788. And in it, there's a chapter dedicated to these devices. The Spear of Longinus a.k.a. the Spear of Destiny, is an animated object that falls under the heading of Theophia. And Hitler wanted it more for than symbolic reasons.
I remember a brother telling me that he was into Norse magic and mythology and that he would combine it with the hermetic sciences and he could since hermetics is a science and not a religion. But that got me to thinking about Thor's hammer, Melnir, and that it may not be a myth, but a forgotten piece of technology that lives only in legend and myth in the Marvel Universe now. So, brothers and sisters, understand this. Atlantean technology and the technology of other antediluvian civilizations was the combination of the conscious will and machine. And these machines were constructed from plans that used the purest form of science and materials that took advantage of the natural laws of creation.